Richard, would you like to start? Sure. Well, it's a pleasure to be with everyone. Um, I can at least be inspired with my, at least part of my Austrian economics library and Austrian economist uh, gallery of pictures behind me. Um, I think we need to remember the environment uh, when that South Royalton uh, conference occurred now 40 years ago this June. Ludwig von Mises had passed away in uh, October of 1973. Uh, the Austrian school, for all intents and purposes, seemed to be nothing more than a footnote in the history of economic thought. Um, Kersner had recently published his Competition and Entrepreneurship book. Of course, Murray Rothbard had published Man, Economy, and State uh, a good decade earlier. But there really didn't seem to be much of of a future for the Austrians. It seemed to be a group of strange people interested in the history of thought or, or an odd a group of thinkers that seemed to be long out of date. None of us would have an anticipated or imagined that merely a few months after that South Royalton conference, Friedrich Hayek would be awarded the Nobel Prize in economics. And that, that this conference and Hayek's uh, award, uh, being awarded the Nobel Prize basically served as the catalyst and the springboard for what has been for four decades now the revival of the Austrian School of Economics. Uh, Joe had asked me to give sort of some recollections, maybe some stories. Uh, let me start off with, uh, with, with what I expected to meet when I got there. I, of course, had been reading Murray Rothbard's books. I was an avid uh, subscriber to his Libertarian Forum, but I had not seen a picture of Murray. And just from reading his books, I had this impression that he was tall, thin, and extremely serious. You cannot imagine the shock I had when I arrive in South Royalton, and here is this relatively short, rotund individual who keeps laughing and cackling and telling unending stories and jokes. That was my first awakening to meeting a real live Austrian economist. Um, but it, the other thing that 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 that, that struck me is is that the intensity of the interest of the other participants there, including like 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 Joe, for example. Um, and by the way, uh, uh, Joe, I don't know if he found this picture. I looked for it and I couldn't find it. But 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 Joe had a much longer and shaggier beard back then. Uh, I, I, I had this impression that I had met sort of like an Austro caveman from just his physical. <laughs> And of course, it gave me the opportunity to meet as well Ludwig Lachmann. And uh, uh, Lachmann, for many of you who did not have an opportunity to meet him, uh, was 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 a character himself. Uh, he talked in a very strange voice, like this. And I remember that he. I went on a walk around the square in South Royalton, and this was sort of a very small a low-populated little village, practically. And there was a Civil War statue in the middle of the square. And on, on, towards the end of the week, I asked him what was his impression of the conference. And he replied, well, Mr. Ebling, I have found it very interesting to be in a place that it tells me what life was like in the 19th century. <laughs> Uh, it was it was a bizarre situation. Uh, something strange happened one night, and uh, Suda Shinoy, who has tragically passed away a few years ago, but was an avid Hayek scholar, uh, she she came down one morning and 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 said that something had happened in her shower, but was unwilling to say what it was. But she said it was extremely scary. Uh, the, the, the other thing was is that Murray was holding court night after night. And uh, he would keep us awake until 3 o'clock or, or 4 o'clock in the morning until finally Joey, his wife, would come downstairs and say, Murray, you have to go to bed. And she would finally take him by the hand and say, Murray, you have to go to bed. But, but I don't want to go to bed. I, I have one more story to tell. I, I want to go, go to bed. But he would go to bed. But I remember that, that, that one evening, 
he, he was saying how profoundly serious it would be if something were to happen in this location, because here was the catalyst for the Austrian School of Economics. And suddenly there were barking dogs outside and someone had attempted to make a telephone call and the telephone lines were dead. And Murray was confident that this was some a revenge of the Chicago school to surround us with guards and, and, and attack dogs. And this was the end of us. But, but, but uh, perhaps more, 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 more seriously, what was profoundly, profoundly important was the fact that, that, that the lectures that, that Israel Kirzner, Murray Rothbard, and Ludwig Lachman gave uh, during that week uh, really set the tone and direction. It was a, both a summary and a, a, a positive restatement about what the nature of the Austrian school was. Murray's lectures on praxeology and its, and, and its antecedents, uh, Kirzner on the market process, Lachman on various aspects of capital theory, all of these set a beginning of sort of a sense, uh, a, a foundation for a reawakening of the, of, of the Austrian school. Um, I look back on it after 40, 40 years, and you know, I can't even believe that 40 years has passed. I mean, you know, your body gets older, but in your head, you're still like you when you were 25 or something. I can't believe that 40 years have passed. But, but to think of, of thinking of, of the people who were at that conference, who were extremely young, just beginning, uh, like myself, I, had, I was just about to begin graduate school. Others were in graduate school. And the large number of those participants who have become the real foundations of this renaissance of the Austrian school in developing the theory, expanding the theory, refining the theory, taking the theory into directions not anticipated. One of the events that week was that Milton Friedman came to the conference to attend one of the dinners. And I'm sure that every one of the people on the panel who were there will recall that he got up and, at one point and he, he said, you know, he realized that he was at a conference on Austrian economics, but he insisted that there are no schools of economics. There's only good economics and bad economics, with the implication that somehow we were on a fool's errand. But I would suggest, if I may, that we were there because we considered Austrian economics to be good economics and right economics. And it's flourishing, it's vibrancy, it's growth, it's development in these now 40 years demonstrates that it is not only the ideas of the past, but the foundations for a truly profound and insightful economics of the future. That's what those of you who are there who are younger in particular must understand and then take the ideas that we were first grappling with four decades ago and take them further for the rest of the 21st century and then leave it as a legacy yourself for those who will follow us into the 22nd century. Thank you very much.